The New York Times is now asking the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court for documents from the wiretapping application of Carter Page. And Republican Congressman Michael McCall is also calling for the FISA application to be made public. So are lawmakers in the media finally realizing the need for transparency? Joining me now, he's been singing this tune for a while. It's Kentucky Congressman Thomas Massey. Welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me on, Kennedy. So I was almost shocked to realize that we've never had one of these FISA warrant applications released. Do you think that will finally happen? I think so. Even the process for getting a FISA warrant until this food fight of these memos being thrown back and forth was secret to us, even to members of Congress. I think the great thing about the escalating fight between the Democrats and Republicans here is that as a result, we're getting more transparency. Yes, and, and those who lean toward the side of liberty are sitting back watching the pies fly, saying this is what we've been talking about for years. You know, it's, it's this type of overreach uh, that you and some of your colleagues on Capitol Hill have been documenting, but still both sides are doing their best uh, to keep prying eyes away from that dirty truth. I think there's a scandal here that very few people are recognizing, which is the Intel Committee, the people responsible for oversight of the FISA process, sat on this information until we reauthorized the 702 part of yeah. the FISA program. They knew about this. this is, it goes back to the old question, what did they know and when did they know it? Yeah. Well, the, we knew that they knew that the FISA process was ripe for abuse and was being abused, but they sat on this and encouraged at the same time for every member of Congress to rubber stamp this FISA program back in December and January, and we fought this. We think there's a case for reopening that FISA reauthorization. Yes, absolutely. There definitely needs to be reforms because this is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, look, there's a part of the FISA process that requires you to get a warrant from a secret court. I think our founding fathers would be worried about that, but they would be appalled at the other part of the FISA process that's not being discussed, which is what allows them to spy on you and me, Kennedy, yeah. without even getting a warrant. And, and President Obama from 2013 to 20, 2013 to 2016 uh, came out and vehemently defended the NSA and the FISA process. And those were essentially lies. The apologists who came out and who said, we're not listening to your phone calls, we're not reading your emails, that was absolute nonsense. We don't know how many Americans are targeted under this program that is supposed to be about surveilling foreign targets who are a threat to our national security. Americans get scooped up in that. We don't know how many. There is no oversight on uh, who is surveilled and, and how they are surveilled. And I don't know if there's a way to change that, if this Amash amendment during the 702 uh, process, if that was squashed, how can we possibly e expect even stronger safeguards? Well, if we had the vote on the Amash Amendment or the Massey Amendments that preceded that, if we had that vote today, we would prevail because I had um, colleagues get up to the microphone in our conference this morning and say, why didn't you tell us about this? We need to reopen this back up because I voted for FISA and you didn't tell me the story here. Yeah, and, and that's the crazy thing because if you go back and you look at the record and you look at what you have said on record and Justin Amash and Mike Lee and Rand Paul and Ron Wyden and members of both parties, even Adam Schiff had a piece of legislation that he put forward in order to have Senate confirmation of these FISA court judges. Uh, we don't have that. I mean, there are the blatant abuses and lies and the oversteps of power. And then there are the things where warrants are actually obtained. And even though they go through that somewhat legal process, it's still nefarious. This, this is the swamp. This is what we talk about when we talk about the deep state. Doesn't matter whether you have a Republican or a Democrat in the White House. Doesn't matter if it's Nancy Pelosi or Paul Ryan. They all want the same thing, bigger government, more spying, more surveillance. Yeah. And that's what a few of us are up here fighting because the people are on our side. And I'm just loving it right now, this food fight of memos that's flying back and forth. I say let's air all the laundry and then let's vote on FISA. Yeah, and, and you even have uh, Michael McCall, a Texas congressman, who came out and said the same thing. Put out the FISA application. Let's see uh, what the evidence was they used in order to obtain this uh, wiretap. You know, what was in there? Instead of Adam Schiff's version and Devin Nunes's version, and I'm sorry, but I, I think both of those people are 
they're less than to be believed, uh, yeah. the claims that they put forward for what they're writing in their respective memos. I agree with you. They're the ones who sat on this information. They were both in favor of reauthorizing FISA, and they both knew that this was happening in the background. They yeah. both knew about the abuses. So if they're heroes, you know, that's what Trump tweeted. I'm not sure, but let's take what they've got out in the open, and let's, let's use that for the better good. All right, let's seek the truth. It, it's simple. It can be painful, but it is absolutely necessary right now. Congressman Massey, thank you so much.